Hello, hello. We've been having fun in the stream doing AI things and you guys asked me to show you how to set up a Google Colab workbook. We are going to set up a Disco Diffusion workbook. So you are going to see how it happens. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a Google account and you're going to have to know how to access your Google Drive. So I've made a Google account and I have access the drive. You usually do that through here and there. So if you're somewhere else, click on these little list of Google apps and go to the little triangle that's your Google Drive. There we go. Um, I'll show you how, if you if you don't want to take notes, I'll show you the search I did. I just pretty much asked, I asked Google, what is a Google Colab notebook? So do you know what it is? Um, and it's pretty much a product from Google Research. They are going to provide us the infrastructure so that we can actually run the Disco Diffusion uh, workbook. Um, what is the Disco Diffusion Workbook? How does AI art work? Now, in a nutshell, I googled this for you. AI art, VQ, GAN, and CLIP. So as it was explained to me is it is an adversarial network where the VQ GAN generates the art and the clip is the text that you put in and it pretty much interrogates um, the text against the art and vice versa, if I understand it correctly. So if you want to know more, have a look at that. Go for your life. Back here, um, I next uh, googled for you what is Google Colab Notebook Disco Diffusion. You are going to want to go and find the latest one here. So Disco Diffusion at this time uh, has Portrait Generator as well. So we're going to just open that one and it is going to actually open for us um, the workbook. This is what it's going to look like more or less, okay? So the first things we're going to do now, here's where I'm going to start referring to my notes. So bear with me if there's some um, paper happening. So I said here, file, save a copy in the drive, and it opens your copy in your drive. Okay, so let's see. File, save a copy in the drive, and that should do it, creating a copy. Then I wrote, close it so that we can find it on our own. Okay, we can do that. So after it's created this copy, I'm going to close this, and hopefully I can find it again. Copy of Disco Diffusion. Okay, so that is it, but just in case, where is my drive? Ah, oh, here we go. So you saw earlier my drive had nothing in it. Now it says Colab Workbook. Nice. We found it. Okay, so far so good. Now let's see. Double click to open this notebook in. There we go. Click, click. Copy of the workbook. Okay, so click, click. Please open. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Okay, now there's a couple of places that we're going to actually put settings in and there's a couple of places we're not going to change. Um, I'm going to work through it and if, I, if, if we can in the end we'll do a summary. So first things first, of course at the top you see file, edit, view, insert, runtime tools, help, pretty standard stuff. On the side here you see your table of contents, that's where we're going to be doing things in. And as we as we get more familiar with it, and there might be other other opportunities to talk about this, um, we, we can get into more depth things. Okay, so first things we're going to have a look at the table of contents, which is pretty much clicking on the top um, button and it gives me my table of contents. I'm going to look for something that says batch name because that's what it's going to save us. So if you see batch name, let me know. There's the diffuse. Tutorial, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Where are your batch name? <laughs> Is it in settings? Batch name, there you are. Settings and batch name. So when we make something, we are going, to, when every time we make something, we're going to give it a different batch name because this is pretty much where it's going to save things in. I think there's three or four things we change in here, but let's start with a batch name. We are going to call this, um, Annie says, just because. So Annie Batch, uh, the batch name is the directory. Cool. Artwork by Annie could work as well. That's fine. The steps is how long it runs. 250 is decent, a decent one to practice. I'm going to leave it at that. The height and width. Now this is an interesting one. So as it was explained to me, at this side it is pretty big. If you want to save um, some time you can make this smaller so it works somehow in factors of four or something so let's see I don't actually see what so I said here make it smaller for example half 640 by 480 and you can always upscale it if you find one that you like um, because the next time you run it you might not necessarily get the same um, image um, but it definitely halves the image 
or if you make it bigger, it doubles the image but four times bigger. In the worst case, you find an image you like, you can just upscale it, or you can use it as an input image. So we are going to change this because my notes that I made say so. We're going to make it into 640 by 480. Alrighty. All these other things I'm not really going to play with. Let me just double check. Playground on settings. Okay, we can change this later. I am happy with this. Um, yeah, we're not going to make a video out of this. So I'm not going to change any of these settings. And I'm pretty much going to leave that there. The next one I'm going to look for is I'm going to go back to the settings. I'm not going to change animation, not going to look at extra settings, but I am going to go to the prompts. So this is where it gets interesting. So you know how when we make the art, on, or we make the AI art things on our channel, we pretty much found that the magic lies in the prompt. So a couple of things that I wrote here, let me just see. Um, we are going to change the top line. So what I'm looking at here is, you see here, a beautiful painting of a singular lighthouse shining its light across da 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 da. That is the prompt that we are actually going to change. And this one, I'm not going to change. Now let me see what I said here. Delete this line. The careful things that I note is not to delete this bracket. And to make sure that I don't remove the previous one. Okay, so we leave this bracket and the comma and we pretty much just delete this line. Now in here is where you're going to put your own prompt and your own settings, um, what it is, what style it is, dramatic light, etc. Whatever you want to see. We're just going to leave this one as it is because I don't want to mess around with it so much. In batches is my next note. So here's do the run in batches is ignored with animation modes okay so we're not going to be doing animation modes but five means it gives you five versions or art with the same prompt okay how many different ones it makes with the same prompt oh I see okay so I don't need 50 batches uh, that's going to take a while I'm going to ask for three batches while we're here because I don't know how long it will go for so that'll be fine and then that's pretty much all we're going to change for this one. So really, a few things. Now here we go. We're done. We've changed our prompt. Everything is happy. We go to runtime and we click on run all. And it starts kicking off. It's going to ask you to confirm a few things. Do I want to give it access to my Google Drive? Yes, I do. But first I am going to put this image here so that you do not see my Google account details. Yes, that is me. Alrighty, send me a text. Uh, this will allow, okay, so now it's got a couple of options. It is saying, and I'll show you this because it doesn't have my password or anything like that. Um, do I want to allow Google to do all these changes to things? I am okay. Yes, do it. Go and run, make, make magic. Make magic. Okay, so I, I made a couple of personal observations here while this is running in the background as well. So the prompt requires the RAM. Okay, we click OK. Permit the notebook to access. Yes, we just did that. Uh, a pop-up, choose your account, click. Second prompt, scroll down, allow it. Cool, we just did that. Personal observations, things are pretty blurry before 100 iterations. Yes, I know that. Um, and the way I've set it up now, it'll keep the final image only. You can set it up to keep the um, images along the way, but I didn't do that. We'll see how that goes. Um, if, if that's something you want to see, that's probably part of how we do the animation as well. We, we can definitely do that. Now I'm going to let it run. And when it's done, it's going to start popping out the images into my um, collaboration notebook. So let me just go to my collaboration notebook in Google. This is where it was. Let me just go back one. And you see now there's another folder called AI as well. Disco Diffusion. Images out. I think that's where it's going to put my images. I think that's where it's going to put it. There's nothing in there yet, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Okay. Oh my goodness, let me close these other ones. Okay, so you can see it is running here. It's going to, and if we have a look at it, it's installing all the files it's going to need in the background. When it's done, it'll pop out an image for us. I've set it to only pop out one. 
so that'll kind of be cool. If you want to see the extra iterations instead of just the one, I'm just scrolling through this, don't worry about that too much. Um, I made a note that if you want to see the extra iterations, you go into extra settings. So settings over here, extra settings, and here you can actually set it. Here in saving, I didn't ask it to save uh, along the way. So that's why it will really just pop out the final image for me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let it run now and I'll probably fast forward through it so that we can see it later. But the key thing that you need to remind me of as well, please, is at the end of it, we are going to go to run, down, run time and disconnect everything because you get a certain amount of time to use this. This is, of course, um, free courtesy of uh, the, the Google Colab environment. So when it's done, I'm pretty much just going to go to run time and end the session so it doesn't count that towards my uh, time allowed. But for now, I'm just going to leave it and let it run. I'll probably, I will probably come back and uh, fast forward through all of this. So, yeah. While it's doing this and I'm standing here attentively watching it, let me show you a few things. Um, we asked for three batches to be made, so we can see that it's at number, it's already finished two out of three, so this is the third and final one. And here's the amount of steps. Remember we asked for like, I think it was 250, 250 steps? Maybe it looks, it looks like it's 240. Um, it says it's 226 steps out of 240, so it's almost done. I was going to show us how to interrupt it, but then this image looked so pretty. If you want to um, stop the run, you can always go to run time and then just interrupt the execution or restart it or restart and run all. The one thing that you don't want to do if you want to keep the settings is disconnect and delete run time because then it's going to have to reload all of the books. We are definitely going to disconnect and delete runtime after we've generated our, th our final image because we don't want to be connected to the um, to the Colab workbook for longer than we need to. Okay, so here's the summary. This is the final one. It's got the uh, graph of the three that it made, so we're happy. Remember, we're not making a video, so we're not going to look at it. We are done. So the key, key, key important thing here is we're done. I'm done. Done, done, done disconnect and delete the runtime. If you don't want to disconnect and delete the runtime, of course you can do, you can run it again or whatever, but we're done. I'm disconnecting, I'm deleting the runtime. Oh goody, so I don't remember, I think it's two hours that I have, that you have um, to play on the, in the, in the Google Colab environment. And then I don't know, I think it makes you, it limits you or slows you down or cuts you off. I don't know, some sort of thing happens. Okay, we're going to go and look at our um, Colab workbook. Oh, watch out, it's going to be bright. So this is where it's going to save our images. If you don't see the images here, don't have the fright of your life. It takes a little bit after, after we've done it to store it here. So let's go back to my drive. This is where we were. You can see this is where we have the AI folders from earlier. This is the Colab workbook. Here you can see it um, put down the settings for the Annie Says folder. That is what we just ran. Let's have a look at the AI. Disco Diffusion, Images Out, and he says, and I am expecting that it'll put, oh, it's already there. Here are the three images that we generated, the first, the second, and the third, and also a script of the settings as it happened. And that, my dear friends, is how you have your own Google Colab workbook, and this one is for Disco Diffusion. That's about it. Hit me up with any questions or suggestions. Make your own prompts. Let me know what you did. Can't wait to see what you did. Um, I think next time we can talk about uh, creative prompts and you can even do challenges if you want to. But anyways, this was the little introduction. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.